Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Would the um, chairman rise for a couple of questions? Yes, sir. Uh, talk to me for a minute about the seasonal employee aspect of this, because I've heard I've heard two things since we've been talking about it. I know I understand you're talking about Jolly Roger and some of the amusement aspects, but then you're talking about some of the seafood industry. Tell me how this impacts Ocean City seasonal employment. It it helps them. That bill, as it came in, would have made all of them uh, subject. It would have removed the exemptions uh, for from overtime. The, we restored it to current law, which which provided the exemption. So the bill, as amended in committee, that's how it helps them. Okay, so it helps them on the overtime, but not on the wage itself. It keeps them at 725. It, it, it helps them um, in that regard as well. It does not increase them to to the um, when it's fully phased into 1010. They will remain at 725. So, for clarification purposes, and I want I want all my friends to, to hear this, the the seasonal workers, and and is it defined? Is there is there a, a day like? Is it a 120 day limit? Is there is there a number of days that's read into it to identify? No. So is it months? Is it what you said, May to October? It depends on the facility, the number of days it operates, et cetera. Not the type of worker. Okay, so um, so I'm the bonfire restaurant. That, that's current. That's current law. It, it's current law. That's but I, that's what I'm asking you. Is you're not changing the minimum wage for the seasonal workers in Ocean City, no matter who they're working for. If they currently qualify under the exemption for, for the seasonal workers, the, if you're talking about the crab pickers and, and so forth, the status quo remains. i got to tell you, Mr. Chair, there's not a lot of crab pickers in Ocean City, but there's a lot of kids that are working for those motels and those restaurants doing a whole again, lot. Of again, but your question was talking about the status quo, and that's what I'm saying. We didn't change that. Well, then But you, the bill did. We restored it back to Well, then you might consider this a friendly amendment then. Uh, Mr. Speaker, if I could go ahead and read the amendment in. It's a amendment 423829-4. Amendment number one. Mr. Speaker and uh, friends, this amendment simply says that anything uh, seasonal employee, it identifies a seasonal employee who works in Ocean City for no more than 120 days per calendar year, uh, that that employee would be exempt from the provisions of this change. And I think that speaks to what the chairman was describing. And I appreciate my friend from Baltimore County, uh, you know, jealously defending some of the aspects in Ocean City. And the, the chairman himself just described it this way. And you see if this doesn't fit your experience in Ocean City. Seasonal, young workers, May to October, creating opportunities and jobs that are geared towards the youth. That's the beach. That's our boardwalk. That's all the people that are out there renting you umbrellas, bringing you your little drinks with the umbrellas in them to the pool when you're kicked back enjoying summertime in Ocean City. All the folks that are down there working for college money. We struggle right now keeping those jobs available for these kids. There's so much competition with the foreign workers when the employers don't have to pay workers' compensation. We have a lot of struggle trying to keep those kids and keep that industry going. We're doing everything that we can to provide a world-class experience to people in Maryland. And it is our world-class resort is Ocean City. It's, it's our premier destination in this state. This bill simply does apparently what the chairman says, but it clearly identifies it and it carves it out that any of these businesses that are serving us down at the beach where the employer, their 120-day workers or less, that they're exempt from this and things can continue on just as they are, not carved out. It's specifically said. And, Mr. Speaker, I move the amendment. Chair Mr. Speaker, um, to, the, to the gentleman, the maker of the amendment, you said something that I think was kind of contradictory to your point. You said that, on the one hand, you were making the argument, if I'm understanding you correctly, you were making the argument that 
the, the increase in the wage would hurt the, um, the economy down there. But then you say it in your statement that there's so much competition for workers that, that there was concern about for, uh, foreign workers, I think was a term that you used. If there's that much competition um, for workers, then I would think under, uh, I mean, I wasn't the best in econ class, but the supply was exceeding demand, which would force wages down, not up. Um, if I can address that, Mr. Speaker. The, I think you're missing my point on this. Is It's not about the competition. It's about the sense that our kids, I mean, you know, like right now, Worcester, just let me finish. Worcester County has a two-digit unemployment rate. We're up in the high teens and low 20s for unemployment. Wicomico County has a high unemployment rate. The lower shore is not recovering. And a lot of these jobs are people that are working, whether they're in Pocomoke or Salisbury. They're migrating. They're, they're working in Ocean City seasonally to try and help their families out. That whether it's the European folks that are coming in, that are getting these uh, these uh, working visas, that are coming in, that are creating not this is not competition. Let me, let me stop you right there. I didn't That's mean to cut you off, but I, but you're confusing me with the argument that you're making. If folks are migrating to Ocean City. I don't, I don't understand how, how that's hurting jobs. It sounds like there are jobs there to be had. The only reason there, we have... And, and, and the reason why the, the whole Ocean City, it's seasonal, it is your unemployment, and I won't pretend or profess to know more than you about Ocean City. If you, but my question is, is that unemployment in the non-seasonal period, in the off-season, or is that occurring? Because while I'm not a resident and I don't represent there, I go there frequently, and it's pretty packed from Memorial Day to Labor Day. And, and we would like to keep it packed. If you do this, and we're in competition with places like Bethany Beach, Rehoboth, all the way up the Delaware Seashore, okay? We're in competition with the Outer Banks of North Carolina and where people want to go and spend their money down from Virginia South. All this competition and all this work that demands, and you recognize this is the problem. You're recognizing this issue exists because of the exemptions that you're talking about for some of the entertainment institutions. You talk about Jolly Roger. Well, Jolly Roger is personified in every other business in Ocean City. And I'm not, I'm not arguing with you about uh, uh, Six Flags or any of the other amusement facilities. I completely concur with the whole concept that there are institutions and there are segments of our industry that need to be protected. I'm just talking about this one particular segment of industry and that you would, if you would carve that out corporately and look at Ocean City as a different animal. It is different down there because it is completely seasonal. Yes, we have some year-round employment down there, but I'm not talking about those folks. I'm talking about the folks that are down there seasonally, Mr. Chair. Those are the people I'm trying to protect. And it's not so much about competition as it is about creating an atmosphere where people can still afford to come and the employers can still afford to keep people there, not have to make tough decisions about cutting back or deciding that they have to hire a Russian kid over an American kid because of the cost. That's what I'm talking about. They so still so you're asserting an increase in the minimum wage would cause people to not to go to Ocean City for annual summer vacations? I'm telling where hotel you, rooms are four and five hundred dollars a night. I'm telling you that you're driving up costs for business in areas that are around us that are not doing the same thing. We've seen this in Maryland in in other areas. I mean, how much do you have to drive it up before people will elect to go somewhere else? If the costs have to rise to cover the costs, because it's not just going to be the people at the bottom, it's going to be the people at the top. If those costs have to rise in, in general down at the beach, people are going to look to go spend. If they can get an apartment or, or a, a location, a condo, in a place a little bit cheaper because those folks didn't have to raise their costs, it's going to have an effect on our industry. And I'm, I'm talking about trying to help you. It's the revenues from Ocean City that on it, honestly pave a lot of roads in Baltimore City. It's the revenue from Ocean City that does a lot in this state to help us move forward. We're not keeping that down there at the beach. You all share in that. Mo heck, half, a lot of people in this place have property down there yourselves. We all share in, I think, all the revenues that are generated in the state. Uh, I don't think it's fair or even accurate to single out one jurisdiction as essentially funding a, another jurisdiction. But that's a discussion for another matter. I guess all I can say is this, and, and, and we'll have to agree to disagree. In, in the particular instance, I don't see where, where, where demand is exceeding supply. It, it seems to be an abundance of workers. Uh, and obviously, if they're still hiring, you, you're not, I, I, what I didn't hear in your statement was that they're not hiring because they can't afford these workers. It sounds like that it, 
that they are, they're in desperate need of workers, which is why they're getting uh, foreign workers, is what it sounds like to me. Um, at some point, uh, there, there has to come a time where we, we do have to take care uh, of the worker. Um, obviously, we, we've tried, and, and, and I think your colleagues will tell you we tried in this bill to, to be as fair as we could, um, as much as we could, but at some point in time, we have to have that same concern that we have for the small business. We have to have it for the for the employee as well. Well, it, it would appear it would appear, Mr. Chair, that we're exercising some degree of of blindness as it relates to certain sectors. Because if you can see it for a sector like Six Flags, if you can see it for something like Jolly Roger, if you can capture vision for how that impacts that industry. I'm looking and thinking of a little bit broader picture and saying, can you not see how that impacts an entire region that's subject to seasonal employment like Ocean City proper is? I'm not talking about Worcester County. I'm talking about a 10-mile strip of sand that is our entertainment place for summer enjoyment in the state of Maryland. So are you saying then, if I can interpret correctly, that if we pass this amendment, you can vote for the bill? I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, Mr. Chair. You know what? I'm, I'm not going to make you commitments on you doing the right thing. I shouldn't have to vote that, one way that's or another very, for you no, to no, do the, the right my, thing. I guess my point is, if you don't like the bill, then, then the correct... The, the, so in other the, words, if I, if, I like, if I go along with you and you extort a vote out of me because you do the I right don't, thing... I don't need your vote. I think it'll pass without you. Yeah, you know what? That's okay. the point. Okay, that's on the, the amendment. That, on the amendment. Mr. That's, Speaker. That's on the, point. the amendment. I'm about, this is about doing the right thing. This isn't about it, that, That's an opinion what the right thing is. That's well, your apparently, opinion. Apparently, Mr. Chair, you agree that it's the right thing in some instances. Well, let's find, let's find out what everybody else thinks. Okay. Mr. Mr. Speaker, Speaker. On the amendment. The Mr. Speaker, on the amendment, you've heard, we've, we've heard and we understand we're going to disagree on this particular issue. But this isn't about carving out sides. If you can see it for one, then you have to be blind in one eye not to see it in the other. We're not racehorses here with blinders on. We've got to take the blinders off and look at the whole picture and where this impacts. And, you know, I don't think it should be about whether or not I vote for this bill or vote for another bill, you know, uh, next week or two weeks from now. It's about doing the right thing on this bill and making it work. I certainly can't vote for it if it's going to be a blinded bill that favors one and over another. It makes no sense. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker.